Turn of Stiller Bros at the movies. Awaited by who? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Ghostbusters. Yes, today we are seeing the sequel to Ghostbusters Afterlife, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So, Ghostbusters Afterlife was a successful movie in a lot of ways. It was, it was a success in the fact that it was a nostalgic reboot sequel of the original 1984 comedy Ghostbusters, and it was a success in the fact that it made money, and Sony, wanting to be able to get a viable live-action franchise off the ground, jumped right on to make a sequel. Oh. Yes, at least in one that doesn't have the name Spider-Man in it. And uh, then again with this movie, they are can further commemorate their 100 Columbia Pictures 100th anniversary. Because even Columbia Pictures knows how to commemorate a 100th anniversary by actually putting out, like, legacy movies and big blockbusters and not just one big blockbuster that people want to actually see and then, like, one legacy sequel. But we're not talking about anyone in particular. Who's <laughs> ass off? Anyway, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is a somewhat long-awaited sequel to Afterlife. I mean, somewhat in the sense that it took the normal amount of time for a sequel, but also in the fact that, it, that Afterlife was a modest hit, and therefore it wasn't, like, the biggest thing in the world. But then again, it was also, like, a medium-budget movie, so it was kind of... So all it had to do was make a little over 150 mil, and it would probably be success, it would be considered a success. I mean, it was created by an indie movie king when it comes to stuff like that, so a low budget worked perfectly, and so it was easy for it to break even. And now we have Frozen Empire, the sequel that will probably also break even if they, they did their marketing job right, which for the most part they did. I mean, it's also coming out the same weekend as the why as the theatrical release of Luca and a few other things, but it might do well. But this will probably do well. Anyway, for for this particular entry, we have the return of every, of just about everybody from the first movie. We got Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace, Carrie Coon, Paul Rudd, Logan Kim. The original Ghostbusters have returned with Dan, with the returns of Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and uh, Annie Potts, who finally gets to suit up as a member of the team. And it's just all seemingly perfect for this. And as for who's behind the camera, well, Jason Reitman, for reasons that we are not aware of, decided not to direct this one. He still gets, gets a writer's credit, and probably a producer's credit. He is still a producer on the film, yes. But, this time around, Jason Reitman is not directing, but his co-writer from this movie, and last movie, and the, the SNL 1975 movie that he is working on, Gil Kennan is taking on the reins. And Gil Kennan is kind of an interesting pick because he has done horror comedy kind of stuff before. His directorial debut was Monster House, and then he also did the Poltergeist remake from a few years ago. So the guy knows a thing about or two about family-oriented ghost movies is what we're saying. Yes. Well, one family targeted, the other family oriented in the sense that it is about a family being haunted by a ghost. I'm losing the plot. Yeah, but more importantly, we also have additional cast members with the addition of Pat Oswalt and Kumail Nanjiani, and surprisingly, for the first time in over 10 years of doing this show, we finally get to talk about Pat Oswalt. Yes, Pat Oswalt. He's awesome. We've seen him live. He's awesome. He's a comedian whose work we respect, and we are very excited whenever we see him and stuff, so hey, there he is. We're happy. It's helpful that he's in a lot of stuff, too. Yeah. But also, this is kind of a sad, sad project because... Well, it's also a triumphant project because this is the movie that is coming out on the 40th anniversary of the Ghostbusters franchise. Yes, but this is also a sad movie because 
This is the first Ghostbusters film to be produced without the involvement of series director of the original film's director Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman unfortunately passed away suddenly about a few months after Afterlife came out. If there was a, if he had any actual involvement in this, it was brief. Yes, he is still credited posthumously as a producer on this film, but obviously this is will be the first Ghostbusters film ever produced without Ivan Reitman's full involvement from start to finish. So, what else can be said about it so far as, from the trailers, it looks really, really creepy and interesting. Like, here's the thing. Ghostbusters Afterlife did use a lot of practical effects, but this one seems to be using a lot more. Like, it's weird how real a lot of the ghosts look. Yeah. It's also lo this also does look like a lot of fun. Like we said in, in our Afterlife video, we don't have a lot of nostalgia for this franchise, even though at the end of the last one we did feel a lot of that nostalgia seeing the original Ghostbusters back, so we will probably get a little bit of nostalgia seeing the characters again here. But here's the thing. Back in 2016, when the first reboot was coming out, just for fun, we kind of came up with our own way of how we would make our own little Ghostbusters reboot trilogy if we were ever asked. We started writing the script in earnest, in fact, just as a, like a little writing exercise. So when we were sitting in the theater for Ghostbusters Afterlife, a few things from it kind of lined up with our script, like the idea that two of the new four Ghostbusters were, uh, were siblings, the idea of them basically being independently for forming their own Ghostbusters team, well, team, the idea of a taser that is a, used as a Ghostbusters weapon. Uh, th now these, I don't bl call, I'm not calling out Ivan Reitman and Gil Kennan saying, oh, you stole our idea or anything like that, because these are very basic ideas. But our idea for uh, the sequel of our Ghostbusters movie also happened to be the original Ghostbusters team up with the team from the first reboot under the guise of creating a franchise of Ghostbusters, and somehow every single ghost that the Ghostbusters ever captured gets released, and that's the main plot of the movie. And also at one point we get Janine and Dana suiting up as well to be Ghostbusters, and the entire climax would ultimately lead to everybody uh, busting the main villain ghost. Now why are we telling you all this? I don't know, we just need to get this out there somehow, and, we have this, and we're probably never going to be able to make these movies. Also, also, the fact that the trailer seems to look an awful lot like them! Our idea! Now, a lot of specifics are not in there. Like, obviously we didn't plan on the characters being teenagers, or we didn't plan on the second movie to have a, like a weird frozen in the title or anything like that, but it's just kind of interesting how these connect. All I'm saying is, Ivan Reitman, Gil Kennan, if you somehow have a way of hearing us while we're planning out our movies, please contact us directly and just get us into a writer's room so that we can actually get credited for when you're stealing our ideas. Yes, that would be nice. How long has this been going, going on for? Too long, but we're still going through with it, damn it! Yes. And also, speaking of trailers real quick, we're going to be seeing the Beetlejuice B 2 trailer uh, for the first time on the big screen with this, so... Unless we are not, in which case I will cut this part. We might just touch on it a little bit when we get it out of the theater and if we have nothing really to say about the movie. Assuming that we even remember the trailer, because here's the thing. Ghostbusters Afterlife was over two hours long. It was a chonky boy. Yes. <laughs> but Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is a bit shorter. It's only slightly below two hours. I think it's only like I think it's only like five minutes below two hours and we're gonna be staying through the credits because we don't know how, what they're gonna be doing at the end. So we're going on this whole series of tangents because we don't know what else to say about the movie because all we know is a bunch of people are in it. We know that 
a lot of people who are, were fans of the real Ghostbusters are saying this is, seems an awful lot like a plot to an episode of the real Ghostbusters. We never even we have never even seen a single episode of the real Ghostbusters. And now it's off streaming. <laughs> anyway, that's it for right now. I think. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you after the jump. So we're out and. I think I liked Afterlife a little bit better, but this is still pretty solid. Yeah, this was a pretty good one. And look, Sony decided to market a big-ass marketing campaign by having it freaking snow. Sony, I know you guys are like celebrating your hundredth and everything, but did you really have to try cloud seeding for viral marketing? Yeah, but um, let's get into it a little bit. So... I think one of the biggest things that made me, that me like after still like Afterlife a little bit more was the fact that with all the elements that are kind of loose in this story, it feels like no one gets their equal time. Yeah, it. Uh, I mean, we do get a little bit of extra time with PV over everybody else, but that's mostly because she was the main one of the main, the bigger character in the first one of these and so obviously they're going to continue on her character arc from the first one. Yeah. Trevor probably gets it the worst when it comes to getting a lot lot less time because there is a brief bit with him and Slimer but it doesn't really last that long. It's only really like two scenes. And it really feels like they're calling back to a different Bill Murray movie with it. Yeah. Like, like it's funny when you suddenly realize Oh my god, is this Caddyshack? But still, it's a little interesting that they didn't stretch this too further in the movie and everything like that. But then again, Finn Wolfhard's character, Trevor, has not exactly gotten the bulk of the character growth throughout, the, throughout these movies so far. Yeah. Speaking of Bill Murray, of the original cast, he is the one who probably gets the least amount of screen time. Because Ernie Hudson gets kind of an arc... Dan Aykroyd gets to hang around as an extended cameo and basically mentor figure to the ca to the main cast. Annie Potts shows up a couple of times to remind everybody that Janine is still here and Annie Potts is still funny. So it really, it's just kind of Bill Murray we get in like two scenes, which makes sense because he's the reason why Ghostbusters 3 never materialized when Harold Ramis was alive. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he was the one who was always like the script isn't good enough for me and that's why they never ended up getting a Ghostbusters 3 done when all four of them were alive unless you count that video game that they did with all four of them in it. Yeah. However, it is, I will say as people who were not born until almost a decade after the first movie came out it is very, still very nostalgic to see all of them together. Yeah, it's still fun to see the original Ghostbusters back together in uniform, still making the same in-character quips that they always did in, the fir in that first movie. And tonight has just kind of felt like the evening of nostalgia for something that came out before we were a considerable amount of time before we were born with the fact that we also got to see the Beetlejuice 2 trailer. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Like, there's not much to it. It's just basically, hey, look, we got Jenna Ortega. Hey, look, they're singing Dale. Hey, look, Winona Ryder and uh, Catherine O'Hara are back. Hey, look, Michael Keaton can still do the Beetlejuice voice. But it's, it still looks very exciting to see. But Anyway, back to the movie at hand. Kamel Nanjiani is um, of the new cast is pro in it the most. And because uh, So he's really got some funny stuff to him as well. And Logan Kim went through a bit of a growth spurt between the two movies. Like, I almost didn't recognize him when he first showed up. But then again, that's what, like, almost five years will do. Yeah, but it was just a case of he showed up and I mostly just recognized that it was him through the context clues that he was standing next to Dan Aykroyd. And then uh, Celeste O'Connor in this movie will be doing a slightly bigger role than she did in Afterlife, and proving that she could be in a good Sony movie that di didn't have the entire internet collectively stand up and say, no, no, thank you, no, no, thank you. But one of the things that this movie does differently than the other Ghostbusters movies is that while they all seem to be comedy with horror elements, this one seems to dive further into horror, and I mean like big, dark, dense, dark, Horror. Yeah. Not like the, whereas the original 
Ghostbusters movie and along with 2016 and Afterlife always kind of went for more of a Halloween style horror like just fun kitty stuff this one kind of leans more into you want to get scared you can get real scared yeah it's a, still very kitty horror it's not like we're sitting in there for the omen or something even though we got a horror movie trailer before this movie with that new movie tarot doesn't look great no, but then again, and, and was it ever going to be great? I don't know. But it, I'm not saying that it's not uh, appropriate, appropriate for kids, just because it's more leaning on the horror elements. This is, if anything, this is like a step up from the baby's first horror energy of the first movie. Really, one thing I have to criticize is the fact that when we get to the end of the second act of the movie, it gets kind of dumb. Yeah, a little bit. There's like this really dumb conceit about it that... It just, I was just sitting there being like, this is like, even for a Ghostbusters movie, this is kind of dumb. I mean, there's a lot to like in this, but it's also kind of a, but especially in a movie, in this movie where it feels like they're trying to go a little bit more, more on the serious side than even Afterlife did, it feels a little weird to just, to continue keeping more heavily comedic elements in it. And this isn't, this isn't even because of it's a comedic element, it's just a dumb plot conceit. Also, I think I've been brain poisoned by the internet a little bit in the fact that there, that Phoebe's entire subplot is that includes her befriending this female ghost host that she's met through circumstances, and I don't know what it is, but I keep thinking that there's some kind of romantic relationship in supposedly subtexted in there, and, uh, and it reminded me of this thing I saw on Twitter earlier today, where someone was like, God, God how are people going to analyze media when they can't convey that two people were just really close friends without everybody just assuming that they were in a relationship? But unless Jason Reitman and Gil Kennan explicitly say, no, that's exactly what we meant, I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna continue to be like. I'm utterly confused as to what you want me to want me to think of this. I don't know. Maybe they do another one, and then it'll maybe more overtly get by Phoebe confirmed. Either way, this one is kind of kind of ends a bit more on the ambiguous side of whether or not they want another one. It kind of. It in fact, it ends more of a mirror here than actually. This movie is a lot more of a mirror of the first movie than it movie than, the, than Afterlife was. Afterlife feels like a prequel to this movie that's more of a straight follow-up to Ghostbusters, to the original Ghostbusters. Which I think that's what they were going for. They even, hell, they even brought Walter Peck back, which was just a, a fun little detail, especially here, just hearing a, someone in a crowd yell at him, calling him dickless. And of course, the fact that the very end of the movie seems to be more or less a tribute to the original movie's the movie's he's ending of the Ghostbusters just kind of going through crowd, just going through a crowd and celebrating the fact that they uh, that they won. Uh -huh. Spoilers. Spo yeah, spoilers. But it also just kind of has the, unlike the original Ghostbusters, it also has a wrap up of the character arcs because well, the original Ghostbusters, uh, Ghostbusters exit. Ghostbusters did have certain character arcs. It did, wasn't built around characters. They don't change. They don't change or grow. But in this movie, they had to change and grow because they, uh, because this also needs because this needs to be a movie with characters actually developing and everything like that. Also, it would be nice if next time around they didn't have a dedicate. They didn't have to, uh, to begin the credits with a dedication card to a, a heart to one of the key creatives that may, helped make this franchise exist in the first place. Unfortunately, that may or may not be a, an inevitability depending on what happens. I mean, Ernie Hudson seems to be taking care of himself. Yeah. And uh, Dan, Aykroyd, Dan Aykroyd, see, Lloyd, Annie, and Annie Potts all seem fine. It's Bill Murray who's the one who looks the most, most like he, like all the years have passed. Like we were, like when we watched Afterlife last night, we saw the mid credit scene with him and Sigourney Weaver. And Sigourney, and, uh, and he aged like cheese and she aged like fine wine. Yes. So, sorry Don't to, do drugs, kids. Not to rag on Bill Murray any more than he's already been ragged on throughout the years. Yes, but don't do drugs, kids. Do not do drugs. But, yeah, I think that's it. Yep. Ghostbusters 
Frozen Empire is fine. It's a good movie. I didn't. I don't hate myself for watching it, and I don't hate the filmmakers for putting it for putting it out there. All in all, it was a solid evening at the movies. Yeah, it's solid. Afterlife is still a little bit better, but it's. Uh, but I don't. I don't begrudge this movie at all. If they want to make another one, I would be all for it. Yeah. So that's it for right now. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave in the comments what you may or may not have thought of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and don't forget to tune in next time when you're a diesel if I ever saw one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.